Standard Linux run levels begin at 0 and end at 6. More are possible if desired but not required. Different run levels determine which daemons and services run automatically at that level. The five standard Linux run levels are 0 is halt. 1 is single user mode, and it does not configure network interfaces, it doesn't start daemons, and it doesn't allow non-root logins. 2 is multi-user mode, does not configure network interfaces or start daemons. Um, 3 is multi-user mode with networking, in which case you boot up to a command prompt and you have your daemons and you have networking, but no graphical interface, no genome or KDM. 4 is optional, user definable for specific purposes. 5 is the default um, in most Linux distributions. It's full multi-user mode with X11, so it launches X windows, loads the graphical user interface and genome or KDM and all daemons. And finally, 6 is reboot. The run levels are fairly standard for Linux distributions like Red Hat, Fedora, Suzy, and others. However, Ubuntu is the exception to this rule. Its standard run levels are different from other Linux distributions. The following summarizes the standard Ubuntu Linux run levels. 0 is halt, 1 is single user mode, where it does not configure network interfaces, start daemons, or allow non-root logins. And then run levels 2 through 5 are full multi-user mode. 2 is the Ubuntu default. Um, by full multi-user mode, we mean that it loads the graphical user interface um, and Genome or KDM and all of the daemons. And finally, 6 is reboot. Again, notice that unlike other distributions of Linux, for Ubuntu, run levels 2 through 5 are identical, and the default run level is 2 instead of 5. Run levels are defined by files in the file system. These files are found in the etc directory. Example. The following list of directories for run levels 0 through 6 in the etc folder. Inside these run level directories are links to daemons, shell scripts, and programs that start and stop when that run level is invoked. The links prefixed with S start when that run level is invoked, and the links prefixed with K stop when that run level is invoked. Traditionally, after the grub2 boot process, the init daemon is called in most distributions of Linux. Referred to as the grandfather of all daemons, it takes care of stopping and starting other daemons according to the current run level the system happens to be booting into. Ubuntu is an exception to this particular Linux custom and is utilizing a daemon called upstart in place of the traditional init daemon. As a result, Ubuntu's run levels do not function as one might expect. There are several command line tools you can use to manage Linux run levels. The first run level displays last and current run levels. If no previous run level exists, it displays n for none. The second, tell init, sets or changes the run level to the argument specified. Beyond these standard tools, there are also other tools for configuring the startup options such as BOM and System5. Alright, we've looked at how uh, run levels work in Fedora and Red Hat Fedora. Things work quite differently in Ubuntu. Now you still have, you know, your basic run levels in Ubuntu, but um, they don't do the same thing as they do in Red Hat, and you can't really configure them the same way that you do in Red Hat. Um, so yes, you'd still have you know, run levels 0 through 6, 0 is halt, 1 single user mode, and 6 is reboot. But unlike Red Hat Fedora, um, run levels 2 through 5 pretty much all do the same thing in Ubuntu. They're all a, a graph, you know, they load the Genome Desktop Manager, and so they bring up X Windows in a graphical interface. Um, they're all a multi-user, uh, you know, mode. Um, one of the other things is um, they've departed from the configuration file. So while in Red Hat you would edit um, init tab, this file, um, you'll find that in you know Ubuntu 10 um, in Lucid Links and Maverick Meerkat it doesn't really exist. And then in earlier versions of Ubuntu, they went from Etsy init tab to sort of an Etsy uh, event D type configuration. And then they've actually departed from that now as well. Um, and so, you know, again, if, if we we're going to look at this um, in the etc folder, I'm just going to do a, a listing here. And let me do, do a long listing and pipe it to less. And I'm going to go down and we'll look at just some of the, so, you know, here are your basic run levels, right? You've got your directories, run level zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So in that aspect, the structure is similar. Now the default run level when you boot up is run level two. And if I use the command run level, you can see when I boot it up, the end means that you know 
there has been no previous run level that I've used telinet or the init command to get to. And this is my default run level when I, you know, when I first boot up Ubuntu. But if I were to go, let's go into that directory and, and see what it looks like or, or see what happens. So RC, um, let me do, okay, and let me do, and I'll just do a long listing here. Well, I'm going to do a short listing. And then you can see these are some of the scripts that run um, in this case and you know fan control kernel loops you know different things that run at that run level and if I were to cat read me it would tell me in Ubuntu you know if I want to disable any of these notice that I, I would rename it and I would have to prefix it with the K and if I want to enable it I want to prefix it with an S so all of these you can see are enabled because they have an S in front of them and if for some reason I, I, I you know wanted to or I desired to disable one of this, I would simply rename it and put a K in front of it instead. All right, so that's one aspect of the run level system. Um, now there is an init folder in Ubuntu, and you can see that there are various configuration files here. Um, and in addition, there's also an init D folder. And I'm just going to do again. I'm, I'm going to do a long listing. <coughs> We'll go through, and um, you know, notice that there's a GDM conf file here, and this is actually what we'll want to do later, um, if we want to set it up so that we can kind of you know boot to the equivalent of a, a scaled down server mode, or where we're not you know running a graphical uh, graphical environment. So we'll make use of that later. But let's also take a look at one more configuration folder. Um, init is really what we want, but I'm going to recurse or back up one directory, and I'm going to go to init.d. And we'll look in this folder. And again, a lot of times when you start or stop services, you'll use you know scripts in this folder or links. Uh, for instance, if I were gonna you know restart networking or start or stop the networking service, notice that you know here I have like network manager and I have networking, and this is the you know an actual link to the script that I would want to access or, or utilize to stop, start, or restart that particular service. And so, I mean, while I'm in this folder, I could just type in networking. But even if I weren't, let's say that I was in root, I could do sudo and etsy, and then init d and networking, and I could do restart here. And if I did, notice that I just restarted my networking service there. And then I had to redo that because that was an unknown interface enumerated by um, enumerated by network manager, but um, let me go back to the init folder. And, you know, before I do, if, if I manually wanted to stop uh, the Genome Desktop Manager, I could do that. I could say sudo service gdm and stop, and that would shut everything down. Well, if I spelled service right, um, gdm stop. And then I could say sudo service gdm start. Now again, you might be asking, well, why would I want, you know, why would I want to run my my Ubuntu machine without X Windows or without Genome? And you know, think about it. If you look at the processes, you know, here's all of the running system processes. And I'm gonna let's look at all the ones that relate to Genome and GDM. So um, PS AUX and let me grep for GDM. These are all the processes related to the Genome Desktop Manager. And what about all the ones related to Genome? So there's there's a lot of memory and a lot of CP cycles being consumed and used uh, just for this graphical environment. Um, but it can be very convenient and very useful and very efficient um, once you've configured your server graphically. If you shut down Genome and if you shut down X Windows and, and the graphical environment, you can kind of make use of some more CPU cycles and some more memory. And if you think about it, on a server. If it's a web server or a Samba file server, or an FS server, um, you know, Apache, or you want to use an FTP server, NIST server, um, a Puppet, you know, a Puppet Master server, whatever, you don't necessarily need the GUI when you're not configuring something. If it's just sitting there on the network as a server, it makes more sense to shut down the things on that system that you don't need. Um, and so to sort of optimize the efficiency,
the way I would do it, you know, if, if I wanted to set that up at boot so that I wouldn't run that graphical environment, um, unlike Fedora where I would just set it to default to run level 3, um, in Ubuntu I would want to go into Etsy and init, and I need to make use of my configuration file. So I have gdm-conf, this is actually what I want to edit here. And I'm going to do sudo nano and uh, gdm.conf. Boy, I'm really late tonight, lots of coffee and lots of butterfingers. But, um, you know, I could modify any of these settings, but I'm just going to comment out these lines here. And I'll leave the stop there, stop on run level 0, 16 bit. And then I'm going to save this file. And so when I reboot, what's going to happen is it's, it's, it's not going to actually load Genome. So it's going to bring me into sort of a text-only mode or console mode. Even still, my services, you know, this right now is an FTP server. That server will still be running. It'll still serve out FTP pages, but you know, sends the extra CPU cycles in memory to run my graphical desktop. So to test this out, I'm just going to reboot sudo reboot. I really can't type tonight. sudo reboot. Okay. And let's bring this up into a, a text-only mode. Okay. Now I'm in a text-only mode. And I'm going, just going to log in and um, okay. And so in this text-only mode, again, you know, if if you look, I still have my FTP server running. So let me try FTP localhost. And notice, you know, welcome to the FTP service on Raptor 3. Anonymous access has been enabled for your downloading pleasure and convenience. And I'll just do an anonymous login. So everything is, you know, as far as my server daemons and services, they're still running, but I, I don't have the added expense of, you know, running, you know, again, if I were going to look at my processes, um, there are no such GDM processes running. Okay, and let's take a, you know, look at Genome. All right, so that's a lot of memory, that's a lot of CPU cycles that I can apply towards serving out files via my FTP server or Apache 2 web server or my Samba, you know, Windows file server, um, you know, and, and, and optimize the performance better on this Ubuntu machine. And then, you know, if for some reason I need to log on the machine and change some things or configure some things and I, I don't want to be in a text-only environment, no problem. I can just say sudo and gdm to launch the Genome Desktop Manager. Let me authenticate with my password and it'll go ahead and start launching X Windows. Well, if I type the password right. And it'll launch X Windows and bring up Ubuntu. Now I can go in here and, and change the things that I want to, you know, that I need to change. In addition to um, sudo gdm, you can also use start x to launch the x server. And uh, again, that'll bring up the x server and the default window manager. Right here from the console, I can go into the etc folder, a net folder. And notice, you know, here's gdm.conf right there. So if I want to, I can do sudo nano and gdm.conf and supply my password. And let me just go through and pull out these comment tags. Okay, so. And I'm going to save it. Yes. And just reboot. And when I do that, once again, this becomes my default login. So I have a Genome desktop, you know, GDM and X Windows is running each time I boot and go to run level 2 on my Ubuntu system.
In addition to going into the ETC folder and init and editing the gdm.conf and just commenting out the start options, there are a couple of other tools um, that you can install if you want to use apt-get. And so I'm going to do sudo apt-get install. And the very first one I'm going to do is bum. All right. Um, in this case, BUM just stands for Boot Up Manager. Once it's installed, I can use sudo and run the utility, and it just kind of gives me a graphical configuration tool. So as as you know, Ubuntu kind of moves into Upstart and away from init, the init daemon, and as they kind of move, you know to do their own thing away from the traditional Linux and, and away from Red Hat, um, you know, odds are this is going to change fairly rapidly. And perhaps these tools will become, you know, their configuration will be more or less different. But I'm going to click on the advanced options and I can go to services and and another tool that you might try, um, we'll go ahead and clear this and I'm going to do sudo. Uh, apt-get install and this other tool is simply um, sysv or system5 I guess you know the old unit system5 rc conf oops and if I could type install and let me go ahead and put this and well and this is just a text-based configuration tool um, sudo and let me do um, let's see sys5 rc conf alright and so if I wanted to use this tool again I could go here and you know I could enable or disable GDM across the board here but you know even being disabled all the way across the board as it is it still loads at run level 2 so you'll probably at this point want to use just edit the you know gdm conf file in the init folder and you know this again things things of this nature may change very rapidly in the near future